y'all welcome back to my channel and as you can see we are back with another one okay today i am exposing myself for y'all's betterment great no but in all seriousness i don't regret anything that i have learned and done anything that i've gone through because i feel like by learning by experience i have a really good grasp of not only myself but everybody else around me okay i'm still a student of life i do not know at all i learn something new every day but i will say the experiences that i've had definitely the experiences that i had definitely helped me out i will tell you that much okay who because baby baby girl was lost and i want to make sure that if any of you are feeling the same way or just curious and are also a student of life like i am you get some knowledge over here okay i also want today to be like really chill like girl chat on the couch vibes because when people are very like boom 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 you need to do this you don't need to do it like this you da -da -da -da, it's like hard to listen like some of us have a little bit of a hard time with feeling like somebody's trying to be like authoritative over us so i feel like it comes across better when we just chill you know it's like a little facetime we on facetime but we still getting you together okay honestly we have a lot to talk about so i want to just get right into it but if you have not subscribed to my channel yet make sure you do so join the sisterhood we would love to have you and now let's get into this video let's talk about boys don't we love to do this let's talk about boys because honestly like jokes aside I feel like a lot of times as women, we make certain decisions with the boys that we are dealing with when we're young that can really deter our path for a long time or give us trauma that we have to deal with for a long time. And so let's catch it now, okay, so we can minimize that. For my independent women, okay, it can be very hard to let someone do for you. But something I learned along the way let them do for you. Stop saying, oh, I got it, I got it. You don't have to. Do you want to do this? Do you want me to pay for it? Stop. Stop. You're helping nobody with that. And this is a dance, okay? Like, for example, I like to do for my man, right? I like to get gifts and surprises. I like to take him to dinner, too. I like to do all those things, right? But when I was younger, I never let anybody do for me. Like, I always felt like I had it, I had it, I had it. Like, I'll put my card down. I'll do this. I'll handle this. I'll plan the date. Let's get into that, right? Oh, I'm independent. I'll plan the date. I'll plan the trip. I'll plan the that. Stop doing that. Just because you can doesn't mean you always have to or that you always need to. Let a man do for you. And that doesn't mean 24-7. You can never be independent. But it also means that you have to learn to say, yes, I will take the help sometimes okay you also have to learn to say yes i am deserving of this treatment i am deserving of the treatment that i'm giving this person i am deserving 10 times over of it back and i think i was so worried about taking care of my partners in the past that i didn't take care of myself and honestly they ended up getting so used to me just taking care of them taking care of them taking care of them they didn't even think to try to take care of me because it was like well Tati got it. You know what I mean? Like, well, she's always holding me down, so she must be fine. You're a human, and you deserve to be done for as well. That's why I'm saying it's not even just a monetary thing. You don't have to have the weight of the world on your shoulders in order for you to be worthy. I think as women, we forget that. We feel like we have to do the dishes. We have to clean the house. We have to do this with him every night. We have to do this. We have to do this. We have to be the perfect woman. We have to hold it all down in order to be worthy enough of the love that we desire. And that's not, that's not true. You're worthy of that love because you exist. You're worthy of that love because you can imagine it you're worthy of that love because that's the love that you give you're worthy of that love because that is the love that exists in you already what did Beyonce say looking for something that already lives inside of me okay and that's true you are worthy of the love that lives within you and so you don't have to perform for it you don't have to clean for it you don't have to cook for it you don't have to rub his feet for it if you want to do those things to show your love do it but always ask yourself am I doing this because I am receiving this in return and I love the exchange that we are giving each other or am I doing this because I hope that if I do it long enough I'll get a crumb of it back have you asked yourself that that is a question that you should ask within yourself then do I really love this person or do I love the idea of getting the love I give reciprocated am I loving them naturally and genuinely and with good intention or am I performing this love for him to get it back you know what I'm saying because that's not love so ask yourself check in with yourself with that I think that's a big mistake I made early on I put everything on myself I did everything baby when I was younger I was planning the dates I was taking the trips I was driving the car I was picking them up I was doing everything I deserve those things and if you don't feel that I deserve those things then maybe we're misaligned that's rule number one no no I definitely wanted to say that first next kind of in that same realm don't play wifey too soon 
And let me tell you what I mean by that. That does not mean you can't do anything for a man that you're, you know, interested in or that you're dating or, you know, whatever it is. But when you play wifey, like, out the gate, y'all went on two dates. Why are you cooking and cleaning his room for him and this isn't that? You're not his mother, okay? And that's really gonna be point three. We got to get over there. But point two is, sometimes as, as women, we go on two dates, we'll be like, that's my husband. I'm ready to, uh, 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 uh. Hold on, pump the brakes, pump the brakes taking things slower. When we do that, we already set the intention in our mind, and so we miss a lot of red flags. And be like, down the line, and be like, nah, I didn't see that. Cause you already deemed him as your husband after your first date. Your mind doesn't wanna hear anything else after that. Date to experience, date without a stamp on what it has to be. I understand the notion of people saying like, oh, I'm dating to marry, I'm dating to marry. I think we kind of had that skewed though. You can be dating to marry, you could be dating multiple people back to back to back, whatever it is, you could be dating people to find the person that you want to marry. That doesn't mean that you're going on a date because this date must end in marriage down the line. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's, I think that's where people kind of like manipulate that phrase. You're dating to find the person that you want to marry and that's fine, but don't force the marriage because you went on one good date. That's not how that works. The second date might show you, oh, you know what? I think we're misaligned and that's okay. I love getting to know you though. I actually learned stuff about myself or I learned what I do want or what I don't want. Great, God bless. And we move forward. We, we, we latch really quickly because we see the potential of like, oh, maybe this is my fairy tale. And we hold on because it's like, I don't want to believe that this isn't it. I've been waiting for my fairy tale for so long. This has to be it. But you may miss your fairy tale by doing that. You have to be open to the process of how you're going to find your fairy tale, however long that takes. So save yourself, okay? Keep your eyes open, let it be slow. Slow and steady wins the race, okay? Now, breaking off of that, like we was talking about before, doing wifey stuff too early. Sometimes we can misconstrue doing wifey stuff for doing mother stuff. Does that make sense? We about to get into this. Stop trying to mother a boy that's already been mothered. Let's get into that. Sometimes, have you ever heard the K. Michelle song, Can't Raise a Man? And that is the truth. Ain't that the truth? If the boy is already of a man's age, please stop trying to mother him. Stop trying to mother the boy. I just, ooh, child. This is already giving me a headache because I, I did it. I did it. I did it, child. I did it. I can't even lie. I did it. Bad. Okay? Where it's like, oh, well, let me just, let me just do it because he don't know no better. He should know better. And if he don't know better, Get someone that knows better, okay? Y'all need to be doing stuff that he should be doing for himself as a man and he really should be doing for you. Let's get into it. Sometimes we can get in our own way by doing this as well because we're looking for romantic love, right? In this situation. You're looking for romantic love, but you're giving him parental love. Now how'd that work out? You want a romantic love situation mutually, right? You start mothering the boy. Now you're giving him parental love and he's loving you as a parent as well. Now you're creating parental love, which also sometimes comes with resentment. You know when like you're growing up and you end up being a teenager and start being like, oh my gosh, my mom's so annoying. Like you get in that phase. You and your partner are probably gonna go through that too because at the end of the day, you are creating parental love. You don't have to actually be somebody's parent to experience something similar to parental love. You may be attached to him because it's like, oh, I'm raising him, he needs me. It feels good to be needed by someone you feel like doesn't know how to do for themselves, whether that's with emotional intelligence, um, with physical things in life, with day-to-day -day life, whatever it is. You feel good because it's like, oh, he needs me like a mother does to her baby, right? And then on the other end, he feels good in the relationship because it's like, ugh, she does everything for me. I don't need to do nothing like a child does with their mother. And so you're creating a parental dynamic within something that you want to be romantic. There's not romance in that, it's a, it's a codependency. He needs you and you need to feel needed by him, right? Rather than we don't need each other, we want each other and we love each other because we want each other so much. Love thrives without dependency. Love thrives off choice. It's a choice to be with one another. And we love making that choice every day. And I've experienced that. Listen, I'd have been there too. Where it's like, it feels good to be needed. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm important. And again, sometimes this can hit a nerve for us as far as our self-worth, because it's like, okay, I'm worthy because he needs me. And what do you do the day he don't need you no more? What do you do the day that you've taught him enough that he could do it on his own? It's like when the child goes to college. Devastating, right? And so it's like, why would you create that dynamic in your relationship where you want romance? Dependency has to be removed in order for something to thrive. I'm getting into it now, huh? Next. Now, kind of branching off of that somewhat, stop having the patience 
for men that they wouldn't have for you and what i mean by that is sometimes we end up doing this where it's like okay well he'll get it eventually he'll be this way eventually he'll grow into who i want him to be eventually 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 then you're dating the potential of this man instead of who he is in front of you you're dating the idea of him instead of who he is in front of you and then shatters one day the fantasy breaks and you realize you're not this guy where is he and then you realize oh he never existed he wasn't here it wasn't you it was who i envisioned you to be who i imagined you to be who i dreamed you to be it isn't who you are and so that can be devastating oh god that could be devastating and i want to save y'all from that because it's like ooh, that rug being pulled out from under you of like girl open your eyes look at him and he's nothing like this version over here not only can you resent him for not being the version that you imagined of him but you can also resent yourself for believing in this fantasy in the first place. You can also resent yourself for not looking at who he is in front of you instead of creating this version. Look at him for who he is and decide if that is aligned with you. So y'all will naturally either grow together or grow apart and that's life. Also a big mistake that I would say I definitely did was I did not get help sooner. When I say help, I'm talking about therapy. I have been in therapy for years now, so I definitely still caught it early. I'm only 24, but I wish I would have caught it earlier. I think therapy is so life-changing. I think understanding yourself helps you understand everything else around you, which is why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. Y'all already know. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. I think the idea of online therapy is just so helpful because being limited to just the therapist in your area or around you could definitely me feel isolating and make the process a little bit more difficult. I also know that finding a therapist could be very, very intimidating because it can take so long to do so. But with BetterHelp, you can answer a few questions and get a therapist in as little as a few days. It's super easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. So there is a link in my description box, betterhelp.com forward slash Tati. Now, of course, clicking that link helps support me and my channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. And again, you're not locked down to this therapist. So if you do want to switch to another therapist, like sometimes you want to switch out and get a new man in your early 20s okay you can also switch to a new therapist at any time no insurance issues no network issues nothing like that at the end of the day your 20s can be very very difficult to navigate and so for me i've found it extremely helpful to have a therapist help me along my journey so hopefully a therapist can help you along yours if so you can consider online therapy with better help you can click the link in my description or just go to betterhelp.com forward slash tati thank you better help for supporting this channel now let's get back into the tea stop trying to create a version of this person that is aligned with you if he just simply isn't. What are you gonna do if he never grows into this version? Hmm? Stop dating potential. It wastes your time, it wastes their time, it's unnecessary. Who are they in front of you? Can you grow together? Is that what's happening? Or are you growing trying to pull him up? Again, mothering the situation. Are you trying to pull him up with you or is he growing along with you in your journey? It's up to us to decide is where you are in your journey aligned with where I am in mine. Because if not, I'm going to take the brunt of the hurt and I love myself too much to do that. And I'm not going to sit here and waste my time trying to wait for you to catch up because you never will. You're always gonna be like this. You understand what I'm saying? You need to find someone you can do this with, okay? Go together, not like this. Find someone that can meet you where you're at. Find someone that's gonna meet you where you're at, not someone who is behind and you're gonna always be trying to run to meet you where you're going. Can you meet me where I'm at right now? Because if not, I'm always gonna be waiting for you to catch up, which means I'm always gonna take the brunt of it. I'm always gonna be standing there and looking behind. I'm halting myself in my journey because I'm standing here trying to let you catch up. I'm standing here. I might even walk backwards so I can try to put you on my back and take you with me so we can come a little faster. Why would I do that to myself in my journey? Rather than finding somebody who can run alongside me, who can keep me motivated, let's keep going, babe, let's do it. Who can run with me? We're in the same point in our journeys. We can run together towards that goal. Cause I gotta keep looking behind you like, damn, you still ain't catch up? Come on. And realistically, sometimes that could be unfair because the person that's behind us may not have the same tools that we have or may not utilize tools in the same way that we do. And so, they can't catch up and that's okay. That doesn't make you better. That's where you're at in your race and that's where they are in theirs. And it just doesn't align and that's okay. You have to be okay with that and find who is running alongside you in your race, okay? It's critical to check in with yourself and to say, are we going in the same direction? First of all, are we even going in the same direction? Are we running a similar race? And are you running alongside me? And if any of those is a no, Find the one who is, however long it takes, however long it takes, because the journey would taste sweeter if you know you never slowed yourself down. You never 
you never went back in your journey. You always went forward, whether you were alone or not, okay? You weren't forgiving things that didn't need to be forgiven because you were making excuses for them because you were fearful of what it is to what? To run alone. You gotta be okay with running alone in your race sometimes. Sometimes that's critical. Sometimes that's when you pick up the most speed and the most pace and the most ground, but you're by yourself and you, you you zone out into you, focus on you and where you're going. That sometimes is when you get the fastest. You're so worried about looking in other lanes and looking behind you, you slow yourself down. You focus on where you're going and what your goal is, not only in life and work and this, this and that, but spiritually, mentally, who do I wanna be and how do I get to her as fast as I can? Building off of that. Sometimes you are the friend that's running alongside you and you don't even realize it. That person that you want to run alongside you is within you. You are running with your biggest supporter. Don't look for companionship in others before you look for companionship within self. You are the best companion you can be to yourself. I always say that. The reason why that can end up being a mistake is because you will end up being a better friend to your man than you are to yourself. And that's how you let yourself get all walked over. I've done it, okay? I've done it, guilty. I was being such a great friend to him, right? I was making sure his boundaries were never crossed. I was listening to him hours upon end. I was building him, I was lifting him. Who was doing that for me? He wasn't doing it for me. And neither was I. So where do I end up in that situation? Am I listening to myself? Am I making sure my boundaries aren't crossed? Am I having empathy for me? And I am, am I building myself up? No, and neither is he. So now I'm lost in the sauce. I'm not getting no help. I'm dwindling away. I'm emptying my cup. It's a hit and I'm not getting nothing back. I've used this example before where, especially with takers, when you fill into their cup, their cup is bottomless, baby. That's a strainer. You are pouring into a strainer with holes. They don't got nothing that's gonna keep what you give them. They're always gonna need more and more and more and more. It's never gonna fill their cup up. And by the end of that, yours will be empty and you'll have nothing left to give and they'll still need more. And now what? Now what? That is why it's critical to be a companion to yourself before you are a companion to someone else and to always check in with yourself even if you are a companion to someone else already like let's say you have a boyfriend or something right and you're realizing like hold on i am a great companion to him am i a great companion to myself first screw him am i a great companion to myself everything that i give him do i give to myself Okay, everything that I give him, does he give to me? Does he provide companionship in the way that resonates with me? A am I getting what I'm giving? And truly, the better friend you are to yourself, the better friend you are to him and those around you because being a yes man to somebody, letting them disrespect boundaries, letting them be that type of person is not really being a solid friend to them either, right? The more solid you are in your friendship with yourself and in your boundaries with yourself, the better a friend you will be to others because you will be able to hold them accountable to your needs as well. People need to be held accountable. That's also friendship, right? And so again, always check in with yourself. I think I neglected myself for so long that, you know, in the past, when past relationships ended or anything, I was left with feeling like I had nothing. And it was like, why? Why? Because I gave it all and I didn't get anything back. And so I had to rebuild that. It took a long time. And because I was rebuilding that while you know dating again and things like that when i was single i also let other things happen along the way because i was not fully rebuilt within myself yet and i didn't even recognize it i learned from the other things that i let happen as well i learned from the other boundaries that i let be crossed save yourself the learning lessons if you're able to say you know what mm, pause i need to learn to be a better friend to me before i try to do that to anybody else and that goes for friends too even though we're talking about you know mistakes with boys and dating and you know confidence and things like that that also goes for friends don't let your friends walk all over your boundaries either i learned that as i got older because as much as we can get attached to our man and like we forgive and forgive and forgive we can also do that with friends and it can get very very toxic and so i also realized that i was draining my cup into my friends even beyond my man i just was a poorer and a poorer and a poorer and then when I felt like I wasn't getting it back, it hurt me. And it was like, well, you've kind of set that precedent for so long, they might not even cognitively realize that they're doing that to you. I had to be a better friend to myself to also create better friendships as well. Those of respect and reciprocity, okay? Getting what I am giving. Just a little sidebar. Because <laughs> you deserve it, baby. You deserve it. You have to tell yourself you deserve it. And that's when it starts coming. What did Lori Harvey say one time? Like, remember, you are the prize. Remember that you are the prize, okay? Remember that. And it's so critical because sometimes we like make the men in our lives like, oh my God, they're just the trophy, they're just the prize. Like, what can I do to keep him? My king, my king, all of that, right? And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You are a divine woman. 
Okay, they should be looking at you like that, if anything. Realistically, y'all should be looking at each other like that. But if anything, baby, they should be looking at you like that. We allow ourselves to not receive the treatment that we deserve because we're so focused on making sure he gets the treatment that we think he deserves. But a true king would be worried about how you are being treated. A true king is a giver, not just a taker. A true king is worried about you, baby. Is worried about are you good? Is my queen good, okay? Has she eaten today? Is her mental health okay? How are her friendships going? How is her family doing? How is work for her? How is, how is her mind, body, spirit? Okay, what can I do to provide value? A true king is looking how he can provide value to your life as well, not just is she providing value to me? Huh? Is she cooking? Is she cleaning? Is she this? Is she that? What? What are you doing? What do you bring to the table? Please. And quickly. Quickly. Anyway. <laughs> Please always remember that you are such a gift to everybody in your life. Men, friends, whatever it is. You are a gift, baby girl. You are a gift. You are a gift. Let me say it again. You are a gift to this earth, to this universe. I affirm myself like, oh my gosh. I am just one of one. I am so intelligent. I am so beautiful. I am so well-spirited, I am so this, I am so that, I am so uh, I am, period. I am, period. Like that's it, just I am. Feel yourself, feel yourself. You're so worried about feeling your man or feeling whoever else, feel yourself. It'll be easier to feel those around you when you're filled. Overall, the biggest mistake I would say that I've made like coming into my 24 years of life in the past was just sacrificing, 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 sacrificing. I think I sacrificed so much of myself to help those around me, to help my the men that was in my life or whatever was going on. And I lost myself along the way. I lost my importance. What do I want? What is my journey? Who's helping me? Who's pushing me in my journey? Who's adding value in my life? And I'm blessed to have that in my life now with my current partner. And it took me so much to get here. And all of that hurt and pain and everything that I've gone through, I pray, I pray, I pray I can remove from y'all's life as much as I can. And so I wanted to make sure we had this conversation because I love y'all more than anything. I want y'all to feel safe and loved and heard and worthy at all times. And if you are not getting it from other people in your life, maybe please give it to yourself. You are so worthy. You are so loved. You are so perfect. Okay. Okay. I love you guys so much. Let's have a conversation in the comments and I'll see you in my next one.